There are 12 strikers in Blood Strike, but who is the best? Or who are the top 5 strikers in Blood Strike? But that's not the main point here. All of these strikers are awesome. It really comes down to how you play the game. So today, let's figure out which striker suits you the best. I'll explain how to play the game with each striker and you will discover which one is the right choice for you. Let's talk about the first striker on the list, Ethan. Ethan is a great choice if you like rushing into action quickly or if you rush without a careful plan. Ethan is particularly effective in gunfights that happen in open areas. To make the most of Ethan, it's best to engage enemies from medium to long ranges. However, be aware that in close range, Ethan's abilities may not be as helpful. Ethan's shield has 400 health points making it less effective in one versus many situations. So Ethan is designed for battles in open areas where it's hard for enemies to reach you with grenades and other throwables. The 25% movement speed boost from Ethan's passive skill helps you in a surprise attack to locate enemies first and strategically place the shield. Keep in mind that if the barrier generator is destroyed, the shield is also destroyed and the shield doesn't offer protection against throwables. In close quarters, Ethan might struggle, especially against strikers like Noah who can use gas grenades to easily counter him. Other strikers can also throw grenades to knock the shield and damage Ethan. If you are new to the game, starting with Ethan is a good choice because he allows you to engage in gunfights without taking much damage. While Ethan is powerful, his effective depends on the game environment. Now let's dive into the next striker, Noah. Personally, Noah is my go-to choice. If you enjoy rushing into action, causing passive damage to enemies, and are good at predicting enemy locations, Noah is the perfect fit. When you knock down an enemy and can anticipate where their teammates might try to revive them, Noah's gas grenade not only hurts the knocked enemy but also the others attempting to rescue. Noah is also handy when facing a rush, as the gas grenade can blind and damage oncoming enemies. However, However, there's a catch. The gas only affects enemies within its area, so you need to aim it accurately. If you prefer dealing damage with poison ammo, you can choose to absorb the gas for a 15% speed boost and delay the shield recovery of the enemies you damage with your gun. In my opinion, every squad should have a Nova because it not only inflicts damage but also induces panic in enemy team. They will not only have to fight back but also find a secure spot to do so. Nova brings a unique dynamic to this squad strategy. Now I'm going to talk about Nacho, the striker they have introduced in the last strike pass. While Blood Strike doesn't have trap masters, Nacho is like the trap master we have been waiting for. His hellfire wall is incredible. You can set it up straight or at a right angle and when the enemies run through it, they get blinded. Personally, I have found myself getting taken by Nacho many times in the game. Nacho's class leans toward a more defensive playstyle. The hellfire wall comes handy when you need to fend off enemies or find cover in the heat of battle. It creates a barrier that, if crossed, leaves enemies blinded. This is also especially useful when you are caught in the open with no cover. You can use the wall to protect yourself and your teammates. The passive ability adds another layer to Nacho's strategy. If enemies have less than 40% health, they become visible to you through walls. This allows you to rush in without worrying too much about them retaliating. You see, Nacho requires some skill because you need to place the wall strategically. If enemies see it, they might avoid it. If you enjoy setting traps and playing a defensive role, Nacho is the perfect class for you. Now let's discuss Kraken, a striker with a similar blinding ability. But this time, it's face to face. No need for your enemies to run through anything. Kraken is effective if you want to provoke your enemies, make them rush towards you, then use the skill to blind and eliminate them. Mastering this skill makes Kraken one of the best choices for solo versus squads, because you can potentially take out two at once, as they won't see you coming. An essential aspect is that the enemies won't know if you have used the skill or not, increasing the chances of catching them off guard. In my experience, whenever I have been defeated by a Kraken, it's because the blinding effect suddenly appears, leaving little time to react. Kraken is like a surprise attack compared to other strikers in the game, where you usually have a chance to counteract. However, with Kraken, there's not much you can do once caught in its blinding ability. It adds a unique element of surprise to your offensive strategy. Let's explore Spike, a versatile striker, especially effective in solo versus squad and solo games. Spike becomes your ally, especially if you find yourself in situations where you are making constant mistakes or feeling trapped. Picture this, caught inside a house with no clear plan, activate Spike's assassination mode and you can quietly slip away without alerting anyone. Upon upgrading your armor, you gain a cloak 
rendering you temporarily invisible. This cloak is particularly useful in the heat of the battle, making it challenging for enemies to notice you. It's an excellent strategy for the final zones, helping you survive and secure a good placement. Spike's pistol packs a punch, dealing substantial damage compared to others. The key here is managing your energy depletion, which occurs when you move. If you remain still, you are essentially invisible. Moreover, as a passive skill, it keeps you undetected by UAVs and all the other radar scans, adding an extra layer of stealth to your gameplay. Spike is a go-to choice for those looking to navigate in tricky situations quietly. Now let's discuss Hank, a reliable striker that's like having an extra hand whenever you need it. Hank offers 5% more damage when you are using a submachine gun or a shotgun in close quarter combat. Placing his turret in a slightly elevated position can catch enemies off guard, dealing damage without them noticing. One impressive aspect is that even if you get knocked down, there's a chance of retaliating and knocking down the enemy if your turret was already set up. This makes Hank one of the most powerful strikers available. Unlike some other strikers, Hank doesn't have magical capabilities to blind or confuse enemies. If you prefer a more realistic and authentic gaming experience, Hank is the ideal choice. Hank's outfit serves as excellent camouflage, making it harder for your enemies to spot you, especially when you are camping. Admittedly, this makes Hank a frustrating opponent for some players, as he excels in setting up rooms with his turret and adopting a camping strategy. Love him or hate him, Hank brings a different, more strategic element to the game. Now let's shift our focus to Val, a unique striker who essentially serves as a walking UAV. Almost every striker except Spike gets detected by this UAV. When you manage to knock down an enemy, Val reveals the location of remaining teammates not only on your minimap but also for your teammates minimap. This makes Val a crucial asset for any squad, allowing you to systematically eliminate enemies one by one. Val not only provides information about the surrounding areas from time to time but also helps you stay out of danger. However, be cautious when you are using this skill as it alerts nearby enemies to the presence of a Val. Despite Spike's ability to avoid detection, he usually sticks close to his teammates, making him traceable. So keep an eye out as they might decide to rush you instead of staying put. Val stands out as one of the most supportive strikers offering valuable assistance to your team and aiding in strategic decision making. Let's now explore Jet, a striker who excels in carrying extra explosives and is perfect for those who love throwing things. Jet allows you to call in a missile bombardment right from your location. Imagine you have knocked down enemies who are now taking cover behind a rock, making them hard to see. This is the ideal moment to unleash Jet's skill. Unlike his strikers like Noah, where damage is continuous and can be healed, Jet's missile bombardment delivers instant knockdowns. If used effectively, it stands out as one of the most powerful attacks in the game. Personally, I find it a bit situational and somewhat less useful unless the enemies are unaware of their surroundings. The area where the missiles will hit is indicated beforehand, giving enemies a chance to dodge unless they are in a tough spot and can't move elsewhere. However, if you have already knocked down enemies, Jet's missile bombardment becomes a reliable method to confirm kills. It adds a strategic and explosive element to your gameplay. Now let's dive into Ran, one of the most popular and powerful strikers in the game. What sets Ran apart is her ability to create an instant ice barrier. This barrier not only rapidly restores the shield but also provides additional cover. In comparison to Ethan's shield, destroying Rand's ice barrier requires more damage and you can't shoot through it. The clever positioning of the barrier makes it challenging for enemies to determine your exact location. You could be under it, on top of it or place it and make a quick escape. Rand proves to be an excellent choice for team support. Behind the ice barrier, you can easily revive knocked teammates, offering a unique advantage that the other strikers lack. Placing the ice barrier requires some practice to ensure enemies won't come through it, but it becomes highly versatile whether you are in an open environment or inside of a room. The ice barrier provides valuable assistance. Ran's popularity is evident, with most squads including at least one Ran. To maximize her potential, Ran should stick with her teammates, contributing significantly to the overall team effort. Her ability to provide cover and support makes Ran a standout choice in the world of strikers. Now let's discuss EMT, the medic striker in Blood Strike. If you want to take it easy on healing, EMT is your go-to choice. In Blood Strike, your armor gets repaired automatically, but you need to manually heal your health. EMT can come in handy here. Activating its skill not only heals but also allows you to engage enemies in combat simultaneously. If you are skilled in gunfights, you can confidently face enemies using the skill to your advantage.
match with EMT you maintain health and armor advantage throughout the fight. What makes EMT even more valuable is its ability to heal nearby teammates. After reviving a teammate, they can instantly recover their health with EMT's skill. Speaking of reviving, EMT excels in reviving teammates faster than a normal striker. Surprisingly, not many people in Blood Strike use EMT, possibly because its potential isn't widely known. If you are forming a squad, consider including EMT. It can be incredibly helpful. Let's also discuss Blast, a striker equipped with a drill bomb that proves effective against campers inside buildings. While the Blast bomb can deal significant damage, I find Blast passive skill to be even more helpful than the active one. When you damage enemies, not only you can see them through the walls, but your teammates can as well. This provides a great advantage, helping you locate enemies faster and determine if they are healing. In final zones, especially in close quarter combat situations, Blast passive skill comes incredibly helpful. Don't forget about the bomb that you have at your disposal too. It seems like Blast is designed to damage enemies initially and then when they seek cover or start healing, you can strategically use the drill bomb since you already know their location. Efficiently using Blast requires some patience, so if you opt for Blast, consider using it from the very beginning to familiarize yourself with its unique capabilities. This way you can maximize the benefits of both active and passive skills as you progress through the game. Now let's discuss the newest addition to the Striker Zero, introduced in the current Strike Pass. If you find yourself in a 1v1 situation in very close range without a gun, Zero can be incredibly helpful as it allows you to deflect bullets. The standout feature is its passive skill which provides a defensive advantage. The active skill is even more potent. If you have precise aim, you can slash through enemies. However, accuracy is crucial. If you miss, it becomes less effective. When using Zero, I prefer the passive skill waiting for enemies to empty their magazine. As they reload, I retrieve my gun and counter-attack. The skill can deflect bullets from not just one, but many enemies. Yet, knocking them back may be challenging when facing many simultaneously. Hence, a defensive approach and extra caution are necessary. Additionally, having a katana in hand allows you to move faster. If you enjoy melee combat, Zero's melee combo unleashes a powerful attack dealing substantial damage. Consider utilizing this in squad fights or during early rounds to swiftly eliminate enemies. Zero adds a unique and tactical dimension to close quarter encounters in the game. And there you have it, a rundown of all 12 strikers in Blood Strike and how to make the most of their unique abilities. I'm curious to hear from you. Who is your favorite striker and what makes you choose that particular one? Share your thoughts in the comments below. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Until then, take care and happy games.